say that Louise put it on earlier, but it is who is a family carer? So we know that family carers are some, someone of any age whose life is restricted because they're looking after another person who cannot manage without their help because of illness, age-related frailty, mental health need, substance misuse or disability. Family carers are not paid and they do not always live with the person that they care for. They could be caring for a neighbour, a friend or a relative. And thinking about what type of support they may provide to the person that they're caring for. Um, I think as Debbie explained the many roles that she and the ways in which she supports her husband. Um, so we could talk about practical help. That could be help with shopping, um, with household um, tasks, with finance, legal advice, uh, legal thing matters and also with medication which is what um, Debbie mentioned as well. Then about the emotional support that family carers give to the people that they care for, that reassurance and that companionship, which is particularly important whenever you're talking about people um, who have dementia. Again, we've got personal care support, which family carers provide. That could be practical help in actually helping the person to wash and dress, um, or it could be, which is, which is often the case with dementia, where they're actually providing um, prompting and supervision. So why do family carers need a break? We've, heard, we've listened to Debbie's story. Okay. So we've already heard this figure today. So there are 850,000 people <coughs> nationally with dementia. For those people, there are 670,000 family carers. Now, I think, Maggie, you gave the figure earlier on, was it 20, 24, 20, sorry, 24 billion, the figure that you mentioned? Billion, yeah. yeah, is the dementia, is the cost of dementia in the UK. And the government, or the, the family carers, people with dementia, are actually saving the government 11 billion. The problem is that family carers don't recognise the caring role that they have. They often feel quite isolated and think of themselves as husbands, wives, sons or daughters. They think it's their duty, so they don't recognise the caring role that they have and they don't get the support that they need. Family carers will often describe their caring role as a roller coaster. And what is quite clear is that family carers often ignore their own needs but it's much easier for them to cope if they try and look after their own health and well-being and have those breaks. And that's what we're going to be talking about um, today. Okay. In Suffolk, we're very fortunate and um, we have the Dementia Partnership, which is made up of four organisations, um, which are basically to improve, the aim is to improve the lives of those living with dementia and their family carers. So we've got our partners in, in the Suffolk, in the Dementia Partnership, our Age UK, Suffolk, Sue Ryder, um, the Alzheimer's Society, and Suffolk and, and ourselves, Suffolk Family Carers. And I think it's been going four years now, must be four years, which has been great. It's been great, great working partnership. Okay. So what kind of support can you get from the partnership? Well, from the partners, Sue Ryder, um, you have the Suffolk Dementia Helpline, um, which operates 24-7 um, um, for emotional support. Um, and it's also open Monday to Friday for inf information and signposting. So it's open 24 hours a day. Sue Ryder also have Synergy Cafes. Um, and there are, there are currently 11 around the county which are real hubs for family carers and the people that they care for to come together and actually meet um, with others. And um, they run like a cafe. Um, people can go for as long as they like. They can go in and have a coffee or stay for lunch, or stay for the whole day. Um, it just real, it's, it's a real meeting place um, for people with dementia and their carers and also a place where they can get lots of information and support as well. Um, I actually. 
um, had the privilege yesterday, I was invited along to the Hadley Synergy. Um, they had a presentation and they received the working, uh, they had an award from the Working Together Fund um, for, uh, for voluntary organisations. Um, so it was Suffolk, it's um, by Suffolk, uh, the fund was from Suffolk County Council and it's managed by Suffolk's Community Foundation. So I think um, Sue Ryder, they got £10,000 um, to help with the running of the synergies around the county, which was absolutely amazing. So then looking at our other partners, we've got Age UK, um, who have their independence um, advisors and their support. Um, also, um, day centres, lunch clubs, lots of inf valuable information about people who can come in and help, help within the home as well. Um, and Suffolk Care, or sorry, um, Age UK also run um, the Forget Me Not Clubs, um, which are very valuable, another social group for family carers to go along to um, with the person that they care for. Um, and they run, with, there's lots of activities that they do. So Vicky Hutchinson runs those groups, and um, there's some singing groups um, as well. And I know they do sort of fish and chip days, I think, in Ipswich. There's a fish and chip Friday um, at St Augustus Church, which I know is extremely popular. Okay. Then the other partner we've got is um, the Alzheimer's Society. And they've got their support groups and support workers out in the community. And again, a wealth of information regarding um, dementia, um, types of dementia and um, progression of dementia. Also, the Alzheimer's Society have, do have a national, um, national de dementia helpline, um, which, which is very valuable. Um, one service which is, they've just introduced, which I was thinking might actually, just whenever you were talking, Debbie, is the side-by-side -side service, um, which is a new service whereby um, a volunteer can come along to, to see the person, someone like your husband, and possibly take him out into the community to do something that he enjoys. So it's about actually helping someone with dementia to actually do something um, that they're missing out. So that might be something that um, we, could, we could look into for you. Um, all, all, of the, all of the partners are involved in raising awareness um, within communities um, around, around the county. And um, we're all involved in the development of the um, local Dementia Action Alliances as well. Now, what about Suffolk Family Carers? What do we do? Okay. So we've got our Dementia Talk and Support Service, um, which is what Debbie was saying that, that, that she received. So basically what happens is that you have a volunteer who can phone you up, say, one support night, um, or as often as you want. And really, you can chat about anything. You can chat about um, the weather or you can chat about your caring role. It's really up to you. But most of the family carers really um, value having someone outside their family to be able to talk to. They just find it just really nice to have someone else to talk to. Um, I deliver um, the Caring for Dementia with Confidence program. Um, and, and that program is, again, it's to help family carers to try and give them information to enable them to empower their own, to, to empower them to improve their own situation and that of the person that they care for. Um, the course um, covers lot, lots of issues um, about um, dementia and also about, um, gives family carers ideas about coping strategies and also information about benefits and also what is out, um, what, what is out in the community. And there are some quotes up there of what um, family carers have said. It is quite interesting because it is talking about friendship and knowledge and uh, quite often my groups will continue to meet post-course. So once we're, I know some groups, how many years are you going now? Um, Couple of years, yeah, yeah. Still yeah. still meet up for a and then one gentleman who, who uh, he said, please, no, let's not stop this because you can talk. You know, you know, it's not just dementia. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, he said that he finds it valuable because you can talk without treading on eggshells. Yeah, yeah. Because you can just say. You can say it all wrong because you know that everybody has got some okay. sort of, you know. Um, 
yeah. situation. So you're all going through exactly the same thing and sharing the same um, experiences and then you build up that rapport while you're in the group yeah. through the sharing that you do, the sharing of your experiences. Yeah. And information as well, yeah. Well, it's, it's just about, I think, bringing you all together, that, yeah. you know, and that support that continues is, is so, so great. And I just love it when I hear, you know, groups that are meeting, you know, two and three years down the line. Um, so other things that we do um, is that we, we do one-to-one -one support as well. And I actually can do well-being sessions, so I can go out and visit family carers in the community. And I can, or I can visit them wherever they like. They want me to come and visit them at home, or we can go to a cafe. I'm quite partial to a cup of tea or coffee, um, and and we can have a chat about their well-being, and really see if you know how we can um, how we can work out a well-being plan with them. Also, once you're involved with Suffolk Family Carers, um, then it opens up access to our generic services as well. Um, we have our advisors um, on our information line, and um, we have other projects such as our Fire and Carers Together project where you can register with a fire brigade. Um, we have the Moving and Handling project where you can have our occupational therapists can come out and will actually look at the ways in which the family carer moves the person that they're caring for. And the whole aim is that uh, to look at what the family carer is doing to make sure that they're not um, injuring themselves in, in any way at all to make sure that they're safe. And also I think if our occupational therapist comes out, um, I have heard that if you know, people do need um, extra things that she can, um, you know, she can help them to get that as well. So thinking about ways to get a break, okay? So it's really important to think about what type of break you need, okay? I mean, what would it be? Would it be a day service? Would it, could it be activities for the person that you care for? Or could it be more, more formal respite? So it's really um, about thinking what, 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 what sort of a break do you need? So you can contact um, customer first. I've got the number there, 0808. 800-4005 um, and request, so that's it. I know Louise talked about this earlier, about the needs assessment, community care assessment, needs assessment for the person with dementia um, and also a carer's assessment as well. And I know Louise um, did talk about this earlier, um, but I just want to reiterate the importance of actually planning for that, for that assessment and um, that it's really important that you prepare for it um, and write everything down and make sure that you go into that meeting and um, have, have all your facts with you, that you don't leave anything out because if you leave out the fact that you're getting up through the night, um, they're not going to know. Whoever's assessing you won't know. So it's really important that you um, make sure that you give all the information. Okay. Um, so we've got care, there's, you can get some information about care agencies and residential homes. Um, from the QC, CQC website, um, or their, their telephone numbers there. Um, and Age UK also hold information on care workers in, in your area. Um, and I've re recently used those lists myself, and they were absolutely fantastic. So it's just thinking, there is information and support um, out there. Okay. So now we think about well-being. We think about why do family carers actually need a break? <laughs> why, why do you need that break? Okay. Because you need to look after your, your health and well-being. We know that caring can be a roller coaster. It can be a roller coaster ride um, and it can be stressful. In fact, it was a Hans Selby in 1936 who actually was the first person to coin the phrase stress. And he actually said that it was when a person perceives demands um, exceed their personal um, resources. So that, that's what um, he, stress at that time was defined as. In my course, I use the analogy, anybody save my glass here, anybody who's been in my course will know what I'm going to do. So I hold up um, my glass of water and I ask the carers, do you think this glass is heavy? And they'll, some of them will say no and some of them will say yes. And then I'll ask them, well, how long do you think I could hold this glass for? Could I hold it for five minutes? 
not too sure, my arm might start to get quite sore, might start to ache. What about if I held on to it for an hour? Do you think I could stand here for an hour, holding my, holding my glass of water? My arm would definitely start to ache. But what if I was really determined and I thought, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna move. I'm just gonna stand here until tomorrow and I will still be standing here holding this glass. And what do you think would happen? And we often reckoned that I probably would need the emergency services to come and tend to me because I would be in quite a state. <laughs> so caring can be, can caring be the similar to that, where actually we need to have a break. It's not about the weight of the glass, it's actually about being able to put that glass down and being able to have a break um, that enables family carers to be able to lift that glass again and carry on caring for another little while. So it can help to think of well-being as something that we actually do rather than something that we are. Actions and the way we think um, have the greatest impact. So the more that we actually put into things, the more we're likely to get out. Try, try something new. It's important to remember that no one can give us well-being. It's something that we have to do for ourselves, that we have to try and take chances with. From the Foresight Mental Capital and Wellbeing Project of 2008, they did some re from research um, that showed that there are five ways that we can look after our own well-being. This was actually based on, on research from around the world. Um, and they have some suggestions about ways in which we can, ways in which we can um, feel better generally. Okay. okay. So the first way is to connect. So that's about connecting with um, family, neighbours, those people around you, at home and in your community. It's about thinking of those types of relationships as actually the cornerstones of your life and try and de develop them. It was quite interesting because when, whenever Lyndon was talking about the Debenham project and he was talking about how much they actually the, the volunteers and the organizers were actually getting out of that project. You know, they were benefiting, they were giving to the community, but they were getting so much back. Um, so it's about connecting and um, connecting um, sort of with the communities as well. Um, the next one is about being active. Okay, so this, you don't have to go to a gym. You could walk, you could run, you could skip, you could cycle, swim. Um, play a game or maybe dance in the garden. Okay. But it's just about finding an activity that you enjoy, something that you can do um, you know, every day, that, that, you will practice, that you can practice every day and that you'll enjoy doing. Another element um, of well-being is to keep learning. Okay. So it's about trying something new. Try and just rediscover an old interest. Maybe there's something, a hobby that you had that you've given up. Try and um, tap into that again, because that can really help and give you a sense of um, achievement and, and a new confidence. The next one is give to others, and I'll go back to sort of what I said about um, the Debenham project, where. Lyndon was explaining how the organisers and the volunteers are actually getting so much from that. So we actually can get a lot from, from little things. It doesn't need to be, um, it can be a small act. A small act um, can actually help us in that way. Maybe an, an act of just saying thank you sometimes. Maybe giving a compliment can really, really help our sense of well-being. Another really important part is about being mindful and taking notice of everything that's going on around you. If you're out in the garden, listen to the trees and look at the flowers. Um, I was actually talking to a carer yesterday who was saying that he's very much into photography and takes his camera out with him. So whenever he's out um, with his wife and his dog, he takes the camera and takes pictures of you know, different things that cat that catch his eye. Um, so it's about just being aware, aware of everything around you. Um, there is an extra element to this, and that is planet. 
and you might think what's planet got to do with it but basically it's about planet care so it's about thinking about the planet if we can think about the planet and, and recycling turning lights off if we do those sorts of things then that can really really help us in our sense of well-being <coughs> So we've got the wheel of well-being, um, which each of those color, each of those um, spaces represents um, one area um, of the one of the the, the categories. Um, so we've got the person of the body, then the learning, um, spirit, connecting with others, connecting with communities, and then about taking notice of the world around us, and finally the planet. Okay. Now, what I've got is, um, in the next room, I've actually got a game. I've got the game. So, if anyone would like to come and play the well-being game, um, you can take home some... We've got tips. So, you can take home some tips. It's not just, just little things, so it's about trying um, just to do something different, just little things um, that will help you... Uh, to look after your own health and well-being, because as we know, that is that is absolutely paramount. So that's all going to be happening in the next room. If anyone would like to come through, um, but just before I finish, I've just got some contact numbers for you. So I've got customer first there, um, and then Suffolk Family Carers, the Alzheimer's Society, Age UK, Sue Ryder. Dementia Helpline and Suffolk Wellbeing. Now, I am conscious that I have, um, although I have spoken about the partners, um, Age UK and Sue Ryder and the Alzheimer's Society, I have not um, told you everything about their services and I know they are in the next room, so please <coughs> do um, you know, speak to their advisors and, and they will give you the full um, update of everything that they do. Okay, thank you.